I'm Connor Old, and welcome back to another episode of Old Oscar Countdown. And this week, we're going to be looking at just a new category as I start to predict the Oscars. I'm doing sort of these one off sort of videos that we sort of lead up to the Oscars, different type of videos. Last time, I talked about the SAG Awards, affected the acting races. This time, going a little bit different, talking about potential locks, sort of the Oscar locks, the movies that you think for sure are going to win. And then some potential upsets, movies that could win in categories that maybe some people think are already locked or you know, categories that are still open, um, but are maybe not the, the perceived front runner at the time. Um, and this, one, this episode was a lot of fun for me. So hit the, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you never miss a video and you stay tuned to the most accurate, up-to-date Oscar predictions. And the BAFTAs are gonna be this weekend, I believe. So I'm gonna have an update video for that and reaction video to that on Mondays because that's gonna change the race a lot. Um, but then also I'm gonna do some tech categories before I do my big sort of final Oscar video. Um, but we're, we're nearing the end. The Oscars are almost here and it's as confusing as ever. So I'm here to help you clarify the race in some of these smaller categories categories um, that we maybe do know and maybe some of my thoughts and some of my opinions. So um, starting with the locks, my first lock is Mahershala Ali for Green Book. Now this is maybe one of my more controversial locks because the acting races are so hard to predict, um, but I think actually out of all the acting races Mahershala has got the best chances. Um, why? Um, because starting off with, he's from the movie Green Book, and the movie did very um, well in terms of nominations. Aside from director, it got in things like editing, it got in everywhere it needs to do. Uh, it won for PGA. Um, the movie is a strong Best Picture frontrunner as well. And I think that um, you always want to have a movie that has, uh, you always want to be part of a film that has a strong uh, movie. Um, that That's always really important to help your chances. Um, and also he's been winning everything. He's won the Globes, he won the, the SAG Awards. Now we haven't had the BAFTAs yet, um, but I think that, uh, you know, his, well, that, that's another point. Right now the, the point is Green Book. It's, it's a strong film um, in a lot of ways. It's other competition, whether it be something like, um, you know, Return Your Grant from Can You Ever Forgive Me? Um, here's a little bit of a, a, a stat for you. Um, really the why I'm so confident in Mahershala is because Every single year, there's at least two out of the four acting races um, that get that um, that win. Their movies are nominated for Best Picture. So you know, you look at last year. Um, who was it? You know, uh, Sam, Sam Rockwell and Francis McDormand from Three Billboards, and, and Gary Oldman from, from Darkest Hour. All those movies that won the acting races are from Best Picture nominees. Now, if you're going towards what I guess my predictions are, and maybe some of the perceived frontrunners, you do Regina King for If Bill Street Could Talk, um, Glenn Close for The Wife, Mahershala, and then um, Rami Malek will say for Bohemian Rhapsody. Now. Um, what would be different if, say, Richard E. Grant were to get this category, and Regina King, and Glenn Close? So that's a lot of nominees. Actually, since the um, Academy introduced the, um, you know, up to 10 nominees, there's never been uh, more than th 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 uh, more than two. So there's never been three or more acting races that have been won by actors. Um, whose movies were not nominated for Best Picture. The, the last time it came close was in 2012, in which Meryl Streep for The Iron Lady won, and um, Christopher Plummer for Beginners won. Both of those non-Best Picture nominees, but the other two went to Best Picture nominees, actors. Um, so it's actually really hard to do with this big eight category to still win in movies where that weren't nominated. Um, and actually, the only time that, it, last time it has happened, in which three of the, the nom acting um, winners of the year were not from Best Picture winners. It was back in 2006, um, in which George Clooney won for Syriana, Rachel Weisz won for Constant Gardner, and who won Best Actress that year? I think that was the um, La Vie en Rose year for Marianne Cotillard. Anyways, um, I know it's 2006, so those three um, actors, they, their movies weren't nominated uh, for Best Picture. Um, so, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting point um, that we want to point out, and that's actually before they kind of expanded to, to eight, uh, eight plus, you know, not, close to nine, eight, nine, ten uh, nominees. So that was only five nominees, so that's more common to happen. Um, whereas this, for example, it's very unlikely to say three um, out of the four actors will go to movies that hadn't had their movie nominated. So I think Mahershal has got this locked up because Green Book is a chance, there's that factor. Another factor is that um, Richard E. Grant, which is his perceived number two, isn't necessarily a great number two. It could be Sam Elliott. I think a lot of people predict Richard E. Grant to win at BAFTAs because he, I thought he was actually gonna win at the Globes because he has sort of a devilish sort of charming um, 
role to him, which the Globes really liked. They wore something like Alison Janney for I, Tonya before. Um, another uh, a great award um, that, that I thought maybe he would win was the SAG, because it's very sort of over the top and, and a showy performance in a lot of ways. He didn't win that. Um, so even while he can win BAFTA, I think Mahershala has built up a lot of steam. I think the movie Green Book is very well liked. And the, the momentum isn't really right there. I mean, I think A Star is Born for Sam Elliott is losing its momentum. I think Black Klansman hasn't really won anything, so it's not going to be Adam Driver. Sam Rockwell and Vice, I don't think it's going to be there because I think that his, you know, two years in a row, I'm not sure if I'm maybe going to give it to that, especially in a very small role, um, which is there's another point of Mahershala's is that he has a lead role. When people think of Green Book, they think of him and Vigo. You know, they think the only really other competitor like that is Richard E. Grant, where he has essentially a lead role. But this guy, Mahershal, has a lead role in a Best Picture frontrunner contender. If they really like this movie that we think they do, if the people really like Mahershala and the sort of... Uh, you know, he's not really an ingenue in a lot of ways. He has an established sort of record to him with TV and now with Moonlight and um, some of these blockbusters. So that can really help him out. I mean, the only thing that could really sort of knock him out is I know he's in Alita Battle Angel, which has gotten actually mixed to good reviews. It's not like it's terrible. I mean, this, I think it's going to tank at the box office, but that's another point. So, I mean, it could hurt his chances, but he's not the poster of it or anything. So I think not. I think Mahershala put it in with confidence. I think he's going to win. Even if Richard E. Grant wins for BAFTA, just for, for the record, um, I just think Mahershala's got a lot of, um, and he's got, you know, momentum. I actually think Mahershala's going to win BAFTA because they didn't give it to him for Moonlight. So he's got an IOU, and they like that film at BAFTAs. Um, so yeah, um, Mahershala. Uh, next one here. Best makeup and hairstyling for Vice. This one's a really obvious one for me because there's three nominees, and historically, um, the makeup department always chooses the best picture nominee, of which this is. You know, even got best director, got a bunch of nominations, um, and I think that. Over recent years, actually, every single Best Picture film has been getting at least one win, or most of them have been getting at least one win. And I'm looking sort of across the board and trying to think about that in a lot of ways, and I think Vice is sort of locked up there. So if they want to reward Vice, at least in some capacity, it's going to be, you know what, okay, we'll give it makeup and hairstyling. That's an easy one. There's only three nominations. It's the only Best Picture one in a lot of years becoming the best prosthetics. And Mary Queen of Scots and, and Border has really unique pros prosthetics, but I think that Vice is sort of transformation of all these movie stars into these real-life people help with the acting. You know, they nominated all three a a acting um, performances from this movie. So they really like the acting and they really like the sort of transformations throughout multiple decades of these people's lives. Very impressive. Christian bale has been thanking him, the makeup artist, in a speech like Gary Oldman did and Gary Oldman's film Darkest Hour won. Um, so, you know, this one's a lock. Another lock, best song, Shallow, A Star Is Born. This is a lock uh, just because, once again, similarly to... Um, uh, Vice, I think A Star is Born's best chances to win at least one Oscar will be for song. It's been confirmed Lady Gaga has been performing, is going to be performing at the Oscars. Um, you know, this one has really it, it fallen in, in Best Picture chances, but it still has the Best Picture nominee and still has, you know, Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga, they were nominated for acting. It's so important and crucial to the, the, the song, whereas, you know, the next best thing will say, you know, all, all the stars, you know, from Black Panther. Another Best Picture contender, yes, but it's not really that great into the, the story of the film where this one's so crucial. It's the song of the film. It's, it's a music-based film. This is the one that makes her such a big star. This is the movie song that makes her, you know, the star is born at this moment. So I I think that this one's pretty close to a lock, if not a definite lock. And my next one, which is maybe the strongest of them all, my last one here for locks is best adapted screenplay for Black Klansman. I think that when Spike Lee didn't win DGAs and Alfonso did, is, he's not going to win director now. Alfonso's probably going to win director. But Spike Lee's never won an Oscar before until now. So if they want to reward the film Black Lantern, I don't really see something like Adam Driver. It could get in for score, it could get in for editing, you know, it's on the cusp there, but it's definitely in the lead for here because it's only other, um, in these screenplay rewards at least, they always want to try to reward uh, Best Picture contenders. And the only other Best Picture contender in this category is A Star Is Born. And I think those Best Picture chances have been falling and it's not really, it's known for its music, it's not really known for its writing. And where this one has, you know, great blend of humor and action and tense and really talk about social issues. Um, it's from really biting dialogue. And um, so the interplay between these two guys is really, really funny too. Um, and if they want to win, give Spike um, an award, you know, his very first Oscar, they're going to give him for uh, Black Klansman. And a film that has been nominated everywhere, it's got all the nominations it needs. So if it's going to win anything, it's probably going to be for um, Best Adapted Screenplay. 
All right, going into my potential upsets. First one here is best score for Black Panther. Um, this is because I think the score race is kind of confusing right now. Um, you have, I would say probably Black Klansman, Black Panther, and if Bill Street could talk, is probably the front runner. Um, the problem with the score categories is, is that there's not a lot of uh, precursors. You know, we, the Globes were so far away and gave it to First Man. A Baftas is the best, um, is a, uh, like sound, it's not sound cut, but best um, music category is what they call it. Um, but that includes something like The Star is Born, so it, it kind of mumbles it um, all together. Um, so if Peel Street wins that, you know, maybe I'm changing my course, but I think that similarly to sort of the Vice theories and before, um, that I think every single um, Best Picture nominee will win something. I think its best chances are this, actually. I don't think it's going to get costume design because I think that's going to be the favorite and that's traditional. It could get production design, but it has a lot of CG, which they don't like. The sound categories are so hard to predict. That could go to First Man for both of them, or First Man Stars Born, or Quiet Place in Stars Born. There's so much variety going on in there. I think its best chances are actually score. Um, the music is so integral to the film. It's got a great African-infused um, uh, score to it. Um, and I think that... Um, if they want to reward Black Panther with something, they're going to give it a best score. Um, speaking of best sound, best sound editing for A Quiet Place. Now, this is its only nomination, which makes me hesitant, and that's why, you know, something like a first man people think is going to get nominated instead. However, I think we're going to be banging our heads against the walls if we don't choose A Quiet Place, because when we look back at it, we're going to be like, of course A Quiet Place wins sound. It's all about sound, right? You know, that, that's sort of the logical thing. Different to score, though, there are a lot of precursors. I'm, I'm probably going to follow suit with them. Um, the motion picture uh, sound editors, um, and then... Uh, uh, the Cinema of Society, the sort of sound mixing, sound mixing, sound mixing, sound editing gills um, that I'm going to sort of follow. But I think A Quiet Place is so known for sound. It, Emily Blunt won for A Quiet Place at SAG. A Quiet Place has its supporters. This is its only nomination. So if they want to reward A Quiet Place with something, they're going to give it the best sound editing. Especially if they're going to give First Man, for example, something like Best Visual Effects. This anime feature, um, Incredibles 2. Uh, guys, definitely watch out for this one. I think this one could surprise a lot of people uh, because, you know, Spider-Man's the, the front runner. It's probably going to win BAFTAs. It's probably going to, you know, won the Globes. It won all those Annie Awards. Oh, it's definitely, you know, check for sure Spider-Man. But nine out of 11 times, Picture has been nominated for Best Animated Feature Film. Since its category has existed, it, it's won. Nine out of 11. It's only lost twice, and those were early um, for Monsters, Inc. and Cars. It's been on a real tear streak right now. Every single time it's been nominated, it has won, because I think because the entire Academy block votes on these, they just think Pixar, they think quality, it's the most seen, it's the most highly grossed film out of all these. Everyone in the Academy has seen this film, for sure. So they may just like, oh yeah, my kid's like this, and check it off. Do not underestimate Pixar at the Oscars. Incredible 2 has a definite chance. You could talk about momentum. You know, Spider-Man was just released. It did well at the box office. It's got high critical acclaim. It's inventive, it's unique. It's got the superhero factor. So definitely people's kids are telling them about it. But never underestimate Incredibles and you know, Pixar. That's all I'm saying. Just watch out for them. Best foreign film, Cold War. Now this one may be a surprise because, wait, if you think Rome is going to win Best Picture, of course it's going to win Best Foreign Film because it's the only best, it's the only foreign film nominated for Best Picture. Yes, but you know, something like Alejandro G. Enrique uh, won three times for Birdman, but potentially with Alfonso Cuarón, he could win four times at Oscar night. You know, for Best Cinematography, which is a front runner, Best no, uh, Director, which is a front runner, Best Picture, which is a front runner, and Best Foreign Language Film, which yes, it goes to the country, but he'll still be up there presenting. Um, so I think that this is a Polish movie they like. It got nominated for Best Director. If they really want to reward it something, it's either going to be cinematography or this. It's going to steal one of these two, I think, from Roma. And I wouldn't be surprised if they go Cold War, you win Best Foreign Language. And that would actually make me feel more confident that they want to give Roma the Best Picture. We could see some overlap, but, you know, the BAFTA split Best British Film and Best um, Picture a lot of times. Um, so, you know, we could have this. It's not going to be out of the Roma possibility because don't forget, you know, they really like Cold War a lot. And my final sort of pick, um, best editing for Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm not sure if this is super uh, an upset, but I think a lot of people, I was surprised with people predicting Black Klansman and, and Vice when, you know, actually it was this film and um, The Favorite, which won at the um, Ace Eddie Awards. So this one beat out, um, uh, you know, Black Klansman and things like that. And uh, The Favorite actually beat out Vice, which I thought was my perceived front runner. But thinking about it now, just this Live Aid sequence, the movie has so much energy and it's so fun and has a great sort of vibe to it that I think Bohemian Rhapsody. They really like this film. They're not going to, you know, I think we could have even gotten on for director if it had a semi reasonable director. Um, it's going to do very well, and I think best editing could surprise a lot of people come Oscar night. All right, that's about it, guys. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Make sure you let me know some of your potential locks and upsets. I want to hear some hot takes in the comments down below. That's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And until next time, stay tuned.